What's up guys, today I'm gonna to take you along on a little adventure. We're gonna do a little bit of search and destroy smallmouth. And really how I started fishing smallmouth bass is with a jerk bait. It's a great way to search around, find a bunch of fish, cover a bunch of water. And I'm gonna show you a few tips and little things that I do maybe differently when fishing jerk baits for smallies. There's one. Little tap tap pause. That one's kind of cool. It's right on the edge of this dirty water line. I don't know if you guys can see it. The fish is in the dirty water right now. And then right, kind of right here is the line where it goes from lighter to darker water. It's windy, but wind is what makes jerk baits good. Come on, buddy. They fight so hard because a lot of times they just kind of slap at it. You get them in the side of the face. They get a couple extra hooks in them. I know, I know, I know. Come on. Yeah, he's got it like in the peck fin. Come here. There we go. Another little bass. On the shadow wrap. Just a little guy. Deep shadow wrap to the face. Windy. They like jerk baits. There's one. Little brown bass. A little bit better one at least. Oh. Just lost him. <sighs> Little guy. Well, we're catching them. Still on shadow wraps. This is a shallow. Mainly because I got bit off like three times by pike. But just that little twitch, twitch, pause, twitch, twitch, pause. Deadly. <laughs> oh, that was cool. You guys seen me burn that in because I just marked some on side imaging. So I reeled my bait in real quick to get it in front of the cone. And as soon as I stopped it, I got tagged. Just lost them. So you guys can see here on the graph that these fish are pretty spread, spread out overall. We've got a little three pack there, one there, one there, one there, two there, one there. They're just, they're really spread out. And that's what makes this drifting kind of search and destroy stuff a lot more effective we got two coming through up here but there's not a big pot of them that you can really spot lock on or focus on so making drifts like this is by far the most effective way i've found to uh to catch a lot of these fish there we go Just cruising down the flat, one drift at a time. This one's a little bit nicer. Just barely got them hooked. Post cold front, or it should say we are post frontal. There's a big storm that came through here yesterday. Air temp dropped, water temp dropped. The pause is what gets them. They can't resist it. He's just got one hook. Right in the top of the head. There it is. <laughs> Missed it there, bud. 
little pre-spawn female. Nice fish. Oh, there's one. I don't know if I got that on that camera there or not, or on my chest, I should say. He wasn't going anywhere. Nice. See, he just got all those hooks, all he's got all three treble hooks in some place. There you go, this little bass. There's one. <laughs> They're liking all the baits. We've had to switch. We went from a deep shadow wrap to a shallow shadow wrap. Now we're on a rip stop because we keep getting bit off by pike. Pre-spawn mama. Oh, sassy. Oh, one hook. A little football. Oh, nice little fish, little belly on her. Go make some babies. Here's the uh, rip stop here, and it's kind of cool. It's got this little fin on the tail to actually slow it down a little bit more because you want such that that you know pull pause kind of snap snap, but you really need that that quick reaction from going fast to stopping. And that tail is actually kind of designed to slow the bait down after you rip it. And it's still got that really nice side to side action, nice flash in here. A little bit of chartreuse on the chin and the tail for a little bit of stirring, stained or dirty water. And it's windy, but they're biting. There's one. Nice. You guys can kind of hear my drag slipping. And I like to keep my drag pretty loose, like just tight enough so it's not clicking out when I'm working the bait but as soon as the fish hits there's some give there because they try and hit these things so hard a little bit of give on the drag is a good thing you get them hooked funny a lot like this because they kind of slash at the bait so this guy's got all kinds of hooks in his face but he tried you can see he tried to hit it head first he tried to headshot it which he did that successfully There we go. There we go. Come over here, buddy. So one other thing too, guys, you probably just heard my knot go into my, my guides and my rod. And right now I'm running 15 pound fluorocarbon. And it's a little heavier than I normally go, but there's a bunch of pike in here, so I bumped it up. But I like to keep it as long as I can, as far as the leader, without it going into my reel when I'm casting. So the reason for that, so this is a seven and a half foot rod, so you take away, call it 18 inches, just call it a six foot leader, plus you're gonna have a little bit of line off your tip. Little guy. So we're gonna have a little bit of line off of our tip. Call that two feet when we make a cast. So really I wanna make my leader about eight feet long. You can see here's my knot right here, right in front of my reel. And the reason for that is it gives me a little bit of stretch, a little bit of give. I've obviously got my drag set, but you'll get that stretch with the fluorocarbon when you're setting the hook or when these fish grab it. You've got your rod obviously to absorb some of it, you got your drag, but I also like to keep that leader long. Not so much just for the, you know, the invisible factor, because we are fishing some pretty stained water and the and the wind's pretty blowing pretty good, but it's more so for the stretch. Okay, something to, that I like to keep my leader at least six foot, but not too long where it's getting into my my reel with the jerk baits. There's one. Jumpy little boy. Starting to figure out a little spot that they're seem to be sitting on. I mean, they're pretty scattered, but 
I always get bit in this one area and we're about maybe two casts away from it. Just got this guy by the back back hook. Oh, he flopped through the hook, put it in my jacket. Oh, just barely. But we'll get that out in a second. <laughs> Gotta be careful with these jerk baits because they will get you. There's one. On the pause. They'll always sit on the pause. It's just a matter of like finding out what cadence they like for the day. And normally today I'm just doing like a one, two, and then a one, one, two, one. But it changes day by day. And the main thing that determines actually it is, is water temperature. Now, generally like this water is pretty warm. We're in the fifties. So it's kind of almost a little bit late to be using uh, jerk baits here in the spring, but figuring out the cadence that they want is pretty key. When it's super cold out, you can literally let that bait just snap it, snap it, let it hold it there for 15 to 20 seconds. And then all of a sudden they'll hit it. But with the water being warmer, we're moving a little bit quicker. That guy smacked it. There's one. A little inside turn right there. And that's the spot I've been saying. I've been getting bit on, so I spot locked here and a little bit better one than what we've been getting. It's just a little inside turn, one foot contour, little inside turn, there's wind on it. And there's a nice pre-spawner on it. All right, buddy. See ya. There we go. Next cast after I lost that one. It's just so fun. They smack it out of nowhere. Never know when they're going to hit it. A little bit better one. No big ones today, but just it's a bunch of fun. It's a great way to catch fish, a great way to cover water. And they're smallmouths. They just, they pull, they fight, they're fun. There it is. Nice, nice fish. Well, guys, there you have it. That's going to be a wrap for today's bass episode. That was kind of fun. Takes me back to my roots, my original, how I started bass fishing back in the day. Little jerk bait, spinning rod. You can go catch yourself a bunch of these. But thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.